Hi friends, I am preparing one of my favorite greens today. They are these huge taro leaves, which uh, in Mauritius we call bressonge. They grow out of the taro roots, which I also often buy. You might have seen them in a couple of our grocery haul videos. So I've never seen these, uh, the fresh uh, taro greens over here in Canada in the stores, not even at our local Asian store. So I obtained these by growing them on our balcony. Sometimes when I buy the taro roots, a couple of them would um, start to sprout. And uh, I decided to just put them in uh, some soil in a pot and uh, see what happens. So I didn't think they would grow, but they did. Um, and during the summer month, I put them on my balcony and the leaves grew out to be that big. So now it's uh, starting to be, to get a little cooler and uh, the leaves were starting to wilt. So I decided it was time to harvest them. There are many ways that these taro greens can be prepared and the most common way that we prepare them in Mauritius is to stew them with some light spices, tomatoes and sometimes tamarind. Some people also add uh, chickpeas or brown chickpeas to them. I'm going to prepare them the way my mom makes them, which is how I remember them from my childhood and how I like to eat them. So let's start! In this recipe we are using the stems, which are also known as corms, as well as the leaves. First, separate the leaves from the stems. There are a few varieties of taro roots and leaves. The one that I've grown is the white taro roots. They produce leaves and corms of a green color. The purple taro produces stems of a purplish color and they are somewhat tougher to cook. The stems contain a substance that can cause irritation if they come into contact with the skin. If you have sensitive skin, you may want to wear rubber gloves while preparing the taro leaves. You can wash the stems beforehand, then peel and cut into small pieces. If the stems are rather tender, I usually do not peel them. I just cut them into smaller pieces. When cooked for long enough, the stems will melt along with the leaves. Cut the leaves in half lengthwise, then stack a few and roll them. Taro leaves may not be easily available everywhere, but since this recipe is a Mauritian classic, we wanted to share it. You might be able to find taro leaves at some Asian or Caribbean stores depending on regions, so you may want to have a look if you want to give them a try. So cut the rolled leaves across into very thin ribbons. Cutting them thinly will allow them to cook better into a smooth texture. Once cut, wash them thoroughly and drain the water. Keep the leaves and stem pieces separate as we are going to start cooking the stems first. I'm using a shallot in this recipe. You can also use a red or white onion. Finely dice the onion, peel and chop or mince the garlic. To deseed the tamarind paste, soak it in some warm water. Once it has softened, mash it in between your fingers to remove the seeds. We have another video where we've demonstrated how to do this. Check the description for the link. In a large pan on medium-high heat, add 1 tablespoon of cooking oil. I'm using sunflower oil. Add in the minced ginger followed by the chopped onions and garlic. Sauté for about 1 minute. We usually keep minced ginger on hand. We have a video on the channel where we've shared a few tips on how to mince and preserve your own ginger or garlic. Check the description for the link. Add the cumin and a little water if required if the onions are sticking to the pan. Next, add in the stems, stir, add a little water, then cover. Let cook for about 10 minutes. 
It is important to note that taro leaves need to be properly cooked over a long period of time before consuming. This is because taro greens contain a fair amount of calcium oxalate, which is a naturally occurring pesticide in many plants. They are tiny needle-like crystals. Eating raw or half-cooked taro leaves can cause uncomfortable itching in the mouth and throat. It is therefore important to cook the leaves thoroughly over a long period of time to destroy this substance. When cooked for at least 45 minutes, the taro leaves are perfectly safe for consumption. Add in the leaves and just a little salt to help the greens cook. Don't add too much salt at this stage as you might be misguided by the volume of the leaves and the dish might end up too salty. Add a little water, stir and then cover. Lower the heat to medium and cook for about 45 minutes. Stir occasionally during this time and add water as needed so that the greens do not stick to the pan. You may mash the leaves to help them reach a creamy texture. After about 45 minutes of cooking, the taro leaves will change color to a deeper green. Add the chopped tomatoes and diluted tamarind paste. The tamarind is actually optional, but its tangy flavor marries well with the somewhat nutty hint of the taro greens. If the tomato that you are using is quite sour, then omit the tamarind. Also optional in this dish is the addition of cooked brown chickpeas. You can usually find brown chickpeas at an Asian or Indian store. You may also use regular chickpeas, either canned or boiled. Stir then cover and let cook for another 10 minutes. Turn off the heat and adjust the salt if necessary. Serve with hot roti or rice accompanied by some other curries like a butter bean or white bean curry. The stewed taro greens result in a distinctly smooth, creamy, silky texture that is really unlike any other greens. The closest in texture to them might probably be spinach if cooked for long enough, but nevertheless their taste is quite unmatched. They have a nuttier, greener flavor. On a side note, a little taro leaf tidbit. There is a saying in the Mauritian language that says Jilolobuetsons, which means water on the taro leaf, or more precisely referring to the state of being like the taro leaf where water cannot wet it. Similar to the lotus leaf, the water rolls along the surface like pearls, and while doing so it also cleanses the leaf by removing dirt from it. This self-cleaning capability is also known as the lotus effect. So this expression is often used in a situation where, for example, someone is experiencing some negative criticism that is mostly inflicted out of spite by someone else. This saying serves as a reminder to remain like the taro leaf, that is being unaffected by the situation and be able to rise above it. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and share it. We love reading your comments, so let us know your thoughts. If you make any of our recipes, don't forget to send us a snapshot and tag us on social media. These are the little things that always make our day. The full printable recipe can be found on our website. Check the description for the link. If you're not subscribed already, be sure to click the subscribe button for more recipes. You can also subscribe to our mailing list to receive email updates every time we have a new recipe on the blog. Have a great week and see you soon! Thank you.